Hi everybody, it's Casey Williams. Back in the day, there was exactly one Land Rover. It was the one that looked a lot like a Jeep and came after World War II. And you'd most likely find them on British farms. But since then, there are three different brands of Land Rover. There is the Defender, which is the modern version of the Classic. There's the Discovery, that's a lot more luxurious. And then there's the Range Rover, that's super luxurious. The vehicle we have today is the 2024 Land Rover Defender 110S. This is the middle size. Let's go have a look at it. The Defender really is the closest model to the original Land Rover. And the original Land Rover was known for having a lot of aluminum in the bodywork. And there's a lot of aluminum in this vehicle too. Um, but there's also a lot of plastic in it. A lot of the things that look like they're steel aren't. They're plastic. But it looks really good and it's a nice retro vibe and it looks really cool. Round headlamps, the LEDs, but again, a nod back to the, to the original vehicles. Come around the side, you start to see the size of it. So this is the 110. And the 110 is the middle size. There's also a 90, a Defender 90 that's the you know, two-door version of it, even a little more closer to the classic size. And then there's the 130 that has three rows of seats in it. So this is a two-row model, little space in the back. And I think, I think for most people, this is probably the right version, the right size of it. Um, but some of the other retro cues I really like on it, I like the patch here on the hood that looks like the step plates. I wouldn't stand up here. You might ruin the bodywork, um, but it looks very cool. The white alloy wheels, 20-inch. Again, I don't know if I want those on my expensive Land Rover, but I think they look pretty cool on this one. Coming back, love the retro stripes. I also like this particular model um, with the black paint and then you got the blue on the top, blue on the bottom. Again, I think it looks really, really classy and very cool. The windows up above, again, a nod back to the originals. And coming around the back, I just kind of like the look of this too. It looks really modern, looks very concept car -y. Um, You know, the, head, the tail lamps are, they're separate and they're spaced and they look really cool. But they're also flush, it looks real sleek and modern. Spare tire on the, on the gate. And there's quite a bit of space back here. Again, the advantage of having, you know, the middle wheelbase without a third row seat is you get quite a bit of storage space back here. Seats, fold flat, so you can get big items in here. And whatever your adventure is, you got space for it. The previous generation Defender was pretty rugged and basic inside. It really was more Jeep than Land Rover or Range Rover. But I think this one really strikes a much better balance. It's still very easy to clean those out. This one out, you got the rubber floor mats, you know, everything here. Even though it's soft touch and stitch, it looks nice. It still feels like you can just take a wash rag and just wash the whole vehicle down. So I like I like that you don't you don't feel afraid to use it, and I think that's really important in a vehicle like this. It's also very comfortable. You got heated seats in the front, heated steering wheel, leather wrapped, panoramic sunroof. You get a nice day like today. You can open the roof up and enjoy if you're especially out in the country and and getting off road just a little bit with it. Lots of nice storage space here too. Phone charger and a console. You've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. The Meridian audio system sounds really nice in this. Um, Tri-zone automatic climate control, two in the front, one in the back. So a lot of really nice features on this. Again, it feels, I think, feels more Discovery and Range Rover than what you'd expect to be old classic Land Rovers. Um, some of the things that I like and dislike beyond that, I think the touchscreen is absolutely decrepit. Trying to use it is incredibly difficult, very complicated, very confusing. I had to employ my, my 10-year-old daughter, and she tried voice commands, and it still took us a little bit of time to figure it all out that could be much better. Um, but once you get beyond that and you get used to it, you can kind of figure things out and it, and it becomes more natural. But for first glance, a little, little difficult to use. Um, but you can connect your devices. You got both USB ports down below here. You also got a power plug. So, so it's, once you get connected, you're set there. Um, I do like the flat screen gauge cluster. You can reconfigure this. Um, right now I've got the speedometer, tachometer, nav, and then the vehicle systems all set up on it. Um, you can get full width navigation, which is speedometer, but there's several different ways you can configure it however you like it. So I do like these. I mean, once you get everything set up, I like it, and it's easy to, easy to see and use. Um, but outside of that, I, I really do just think it's very comfortable. Plenty of space in the back for, for two or three people in the second row. These seats are very comfortable. I drive this car to the moon and back sitting in these seats, and uh, I just really like it a lot. There's nothing like driving a Land Rover. And I have to say, driving the Defender is more like driving a Range Rover than the old classic Land Rovers. So this has an air suspension system. It drives very nice on the highway. You can cruise pretty much any speed you want to drive. Um, but you can also, it also does a very good job of tackling you know, really rough off-road. Um, this does have the terrain response system in it. So you can configure it for all kinds of different trains and it'll configure the powertrain to do that. So again, very capable, a lot more sophisticated than the old ones, but also very capable still. But what I like about driving is I like looking out, I like seeing the big flat hood, you know exactly where the corners of this vehicle are. So if you're in tight spots off-road, you, you can get it, you can drive very well. The powertrain in this is also very sophisticated with the engine. So it's a three liter turbocharged inline six, but it also has a mild hybrid system. So you get 
all the power from the, the six cylinder and the turbo, and then you get a little bit of a, a, a hybrid kick too. So fuel economy, you're looking at about 17 miles per gallon city, 20 on the highway. So you're not, this is not a Toyota Prius, um, but for as big as this is and as heavy as it is, it's not bad. Power, you've got 395 horsepower, 406 pound feet of torque. You can definitely get out of your own way. Um, does zero 60 in 5.8 seconds. Again, that's not fast by Tesla standards, but pretty quick by a, by a very large off-road Land Rover. But overall, I've just really, really enjoyed driving it. The powertrain's smooth. You've got an eight-speed automatic transmission getting power to the all-wheel drive system, and, and it just does a nice job. But again, I think the thing I really like a lot is if you want to go off-roading, you can do that. But if you just want to drive this car every day, it's easy to park in tight parking spots downtown. It rides very nice on the highway. The suspension does a good job pretty much wherever you are. I really like what Land Rover's done with this generation of Defender. You know, the Defender used to be a very hardcore off-roader, much more Jeep Wrangler than a Range Rover. But this one kind of splits the difference. You got the capability of a Wrangler, but you got more of that refinement of a Range Rover or even a Jeep Grand Cherokee. So I think it's a very nice vehicle for that. And if you look at this competition, that really is what you're looking at. All that in, this is not a cheap vehicle. From having a powerful inline six-cylinder engine with a turbo, a mild hybrid, the air suspension, the radio auto, all the features this vehicle has, not cheap. So the Defender 110 starts at $61,000. This one, fully equipped, $82,053. Well, next week, we'll another fun car. Till then, storm forward.